What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're going to take a look at spontaneous ventilation during mechanical ventilation, specifically CPAP without pressure support versus CPAP with pressure support. So what's the value of pressure support? We'll talk about that in this video. Let's dive in. here is that we are now in spontaneous mode we're in CPAP we also have no pressure support dialed in we have a PEEP of 5 but no pressure support dialed in now the first thing I want you to notice is is that if I don't pull on this test lung all I'm doing is just pulling on this test lung creating a negative pull which is simulating a breath if I don't do that look what happens There are no, there's no flow, there's no volume, <clears throat> there's nothing. Because in CPAP, if the patient doesn't generate a volume, then there will be no volumes delivered. And so you see here, we just kicked in the apnea ventilation. The ventilator said, now you've gone too long without breathing, so now we have to kick in and breathe for you. Okay? And so I have to go in and turn this off. So I'm just gonna reset the apnea ventilation and get that to go away. And so now you see, no breaths are happening. I'm not pulling and no breaths are happening. Now when I start to pull again, you will see that breaths will begin. So here we go. So now we're seeing ventilation happening. We've got tidal volumes down here. We've got flow right here. Look at our pressure waveform. It's pretty much flat. When I suck in, there's a little dip in the waveform and that dip is the result of the decreasing pleural pressure during that inspiratory phase because remember when we breathe we breathe based off of a negative pressure this is true in CPAP when there is no pressure support dialed in so we recognize that during this this is just all the patient generating a tidal volume that they can during mechanical ventilation. Now typically with no pressure support you'll probably see something like this. Patient breathing 26 times a minute. Tidal volumes are very small 192, 150, 128. Now that's not good. This patient's working hard to generate a normal minute ventilation. They have to breathe 30 times a minute to get their minute ventilation to 4 to 5.21. So for this patient, if we wanted to slow them down, we're like, you know what, we don't want you working this hard. We don't want you having to breathe this hard with these really tidal, really small tidal volumes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add some pressure support. So I'm just gonna take that up to five. Now when I increase the pressure support to five, what you're gonna see is I start breathing again, and I'm not pulling any harder. I'm just generating a tidal volume. And sure enough, look at our tidal volumes. They've gone up to 337, 379, 405. Look at what I'm doing here. I'm just barely pulling, barely generating a tidal volume. So what we see here is that our, our minute ventilation now is 5.5, 5.8 with a respiratory rate of 18. Our tidal volumes are larger they've gone up they're now in the 350 range well what if we take this pressure support to 10 watch what happens same amount of pressure just slightly pulling on the test lung look at our volumes they're now 557 500 520, 534, and now I only have to breathe 18 times a minute to get a minute ventilation of eight liters per minute. So what you recognize from this video is that how pressure support helps to provide an inspiratory support that will aid the patient in taking a more effective tidal volume. Therefore, they won't have to breathe as fast. I'm going to take it back to zero. I want to point out one more thing here before I let you go. We see flow happening. We see tidal volumes happening. Pressure support is zero. 
Title volumes are very small, 170, 225. Look at the pressure volume waveform. Nothing. Nothing happening above baseline. Okay. Now let's add, go back to that peep of five. That pressure support of five. I'm, I apologize. Pressure support of five. Well, I just went six. That's okay. Now look. Tidal volumes go up. Larger volumes. We don't have to breathe as fast. We also see that we are getting positive pressure on our pressure waveform. We can actually see where the pressure is being raised during the inspiratory phase to help and aid that patient with their ability to overcome the resistance of the airway and the artificial tubing, as well as take a more efficient tidal volume. I take this up to 10, and you're gonna see that pressure rise even higher. And tidal volume goes up into the 500s. This is what pressure support does. It gives your patient inspiratory support to take a more effective tidal volume. And when we take more effective tidal volumes, then we don't have to breathe as fast to generate an effective minute volume. So there you have it. That's CPAP without pressure support and CPAP with pressure support. And that's mechanical ventilation. You've got to recognize how to aid your patients in achieving the volumes that they need to help maintain a normal acid base balance, pressure support is one of those ways. Now, well, you know how to reach me. You can find me on Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Coach RRT on Twitter, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Send me an email if you have any single questions about this at all. You can always text me at 817-968. 7035. I would love for you to join my texting platform. I'm going to keep breathing for the ventilator here. Remember, guys, if you're not already subscribed, please do so right now. Share these videos with all your fellow classmates, all your students. Get them out there. We've got to help simplify this concept of mechanical ventilation and everything respiratory therapy. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.